Hi. This is, this is my champ, and I thought I'd better just have a look at what spec I'm using. Um, Deadly Storm, Yellow Lime. Because it, well, whatever, however many mobs I'm attacking, I'm always going to be doing damage. Um, once you get in a position to branch out to other trees, you get some nice little um, additions to make it a little bit stronger. Um, some notable things in the other line. Here we got 5% melee crit chance, which um, uh, the crit chance increase is off. You can get it on most classes, not all, sadly. Not the minstrel. Now, this is for grouping up. I've got Ebbinger, which drops my threat. Don't quite know how much or how it works these days. Generally, I, I like to let the tank have its best possible chance of keeping aggro. And this one, which is the attack duration, which many find very useful. I've recently branched out a little bit more over here. Second wind, I've, I had one I was levelling up, and occasionally you come across mobs that drain your power. And it's actually very, it's easy to get, just the two points. And what it means is that you remove all your fervor, you gain some power. And sometimes when you're struggling around, like Zon on his champ recently, and you have no power and you've got nothing, everything's on cooldown or you haven't got a pot. It is rather useful. Um... It's ideal when you built up the fervor to use that followed by um, battle frenzy. It's not on cooldown at lower levels, so that you get your fervor back pretty quickly. Um, the other thing I'm doing here is a little bit into this, which changes blade wall. Blade wall is very useful because it actually adds to fervor. Uh, does it add to fervor? No, it doesn't use fervor. Reduces outgoing damage by 6% um, at this level. Um, so that works as a debuff. I also have Horn of Champions, um, which also debuffs for minus 20% minus damage. So if I go here, all the champions, minus 20 percent damage, and it's hitting 11 targets, and it's doing a fair amount of damage as well, uh, and it's got a long range. So it's something you can, if you're moving towards a group of mobs, to fire that off first to cut down the damage. Um, and likewise, Blade Wall reduces their outgoing damage by 6 percent. So in combination, as you're closing with mobs, that's very useful. Although it's got a limited range. So that's those are the debuffs for the mobs. We've also got our standard rend to debuff their armor. So these are all things that you use and they're all AE, 10 targets, 10 targets, 11 targets. So you can actually um, mess with the damage of the mobs you're about to kill. Now here we have exchange of blows. Now this is linked in with a legacy. Um, is it on here? It is. So plus 29.2% exchange of blows melee damage. In practice what it does is if you, I was going to build up my fervor but the tactical mastery at the moment is just under 180,000. So I'm looking at 329.3% um, physical attacks. 329. 
if before I go into battle I use these skills, now I can use Swift Blade out of combat without targeting anything, and that adds one to fervor. So I can actually build up my fervor and do a, a one or two things beforehand. I can do exchange of blows. Now if you look at tactical mastery, we're at 143 at the moment because that is our adding to a nearly five grand to our physical mastery. So three four two, we have add that in. And it goes at three seventy. So three seven one. So this will fluctuate a bit, but we've gone from three two nine to three seventy. So we added um, forty percent to our damage for a short time. So it's what. 15 seconds and we also have Great Cleave which also links in from um, trait trees here I haven't quite got it maxed out but I should probably if I'm soloing more I would you know, probably take every uh, off and fill that up um, so to recap Horn of Gondor I'm adding some um, debuff to that and some damage. If you're going to use a skill regularly for one reason, if you can increase the damage with it because you're using regularly, it can't be a bad thing. Uh, notable remission, remission, notable exceptions to this line. Finesse, five points I could put into that for. 2,800 odd finesse when although finesse is good you get uh, get a big um, addition to finesse from uh, you know, the what is it uh, I don't know if I've got what finesse I've got on any gear here um, I suppose it's on here so 13,000 finesse on one item um, how much is it going to add? Not a lot. So I got 10,000 off one an item. Not worth spending points on. And again, with might. Might's my main stat, but 188 might. I think I can get more out of five points elsewhere. Um, this is our general heal. So Every blade skill, 10% chance to restore 5% maximum health. So it's every skill I use, I'm getting 1% back. It's not, well, it's not wonderful, but it's it's okay. Um, I forget where is the killing spree. Um, so the red line has a heal every time you kill. It would be nice, so nice to have them both. Um, so every kill you actually get a good chunk back. And that's the advantage of red line really. Um, we have great cleave, not maxed out, but um, Certainly, it's a nice chunk of extra damage for a short period of time. So, if you're going into a, um, a group of mobs that um, you know you need to get down quickly, it's nice to fire that off. Um, two minute cooldown, 30 second duration. So, the duration is pretty good. It's better than the exchange of blows. But generally, if you're going into um, a hard group, then it's a case of this swift blade and in this line it's an AE in this line it's a single target you have to target however it does mean you can use it before you engage in combat to build up your fervor and get these off and running then you go into battle full fervor that's off cooldown and you go into that that and that to debuff the mobs, bang, get your fervor up and then start doing DPS with Raging Blade and more importantly Fury of Blade, especially if it's an overly large group. 
there is no maximum in the tooltip. It could be a maximum underneath it. But generally speaking, um, mobs will have a hard time uh, being in range of you if there's a mass of them. So you won't actually um, hit so many. But this is this is the big damage dealer. This is the swing swing common, you know, the classic uh, AE attack from a champion. But when this is using up all your fervor and you hope um, this is off cooldown once you've used it, build it up, use that, bang, get that back, and then follow the raising blade. And that's a huge amount of damage very quickly. Um, single targets, we have a, our little heal, 3000 RAL, and it's, it's not really a great deal um, when you're looking at 70k morale. Um, so it's, a, it's not great. can be useful, but it does use up three fervor, and sometimes it's better to you know, use a stun or a horn. Um, or something else to finish the fight quicker rather than heal. Um, and fight on is our long cooldown heal, which is very good. But I'm always finding that if I'm needing it, <laughs> I uh, I'm needing it again as well, <laughs> and I've got to wait three minutes for it. Um, there was um, a set of gear that. Uh, is it a set of gear or trait? No, it was a set bonus that um, had that cooldown uh, be cut with um, I think it was blade skills from the red line that didn't quite work for our AE skills. Um, and I found, even when I was in red doing it, um, I was either never noticing it was having any effect, or I wasn't using it, or when I did need it, it just wasn't quite enough sometimes. But it's quite a nice heal over time. And if you are in trouble, um, sort of back out of combat, kite, hit it, or run around waiting for it to come off cooldown. It's um, by no means as good as the hunter healing, because the hunter healing has blood arrow, which um, is far shorter cooldown, not doesn't heal quite so much, but it's not such a lengthy wait. Um, Born for Combat, every time you get hit, this adds up until you can release it. And, you know, it's a, it's a nice bit of damage for free. Uh, yeah, same range as everything else. But things like this is a, that this is a nice pull with its range. Bear in mind you might pull other things with the group you're following. Uh, what else? So here's my ebbing. Uh, this is my exchange of blows, which gets my physical mastery and my damage up. Uh, Merciful Strike is it's a fast skill. I'm sure it must be useful somewhere. But it's still only a single target attack. And I either I don't have the legacies or I don't have the traits or whatever, but it just seems to be disappointing. Not really worth um, using for five points on a single target that happens to be under 20 health. If it's under 20 health and I'm solo, then any one of my other fields is going to kill it and all its mates around it, so I'd rather use an AE skill. Uh, a taunt. Sometimes it's nice to get mobs off a of squishy. Uh, and fear nothing, removing one disease wound, fear, and poison effect. And plus, if 
background in kind of healing writing. So it's kind of a use that when you need a cure and you just get a bonus in incoming healing as well while you're at it. Um, and the that cluster sprint. I do have hamstring. I don't have any traits to make it improved for legacies. And sometimes it's quite nice to slow stuff. Um, but it doesn't slow for long, eight seconds, and it's a cooldown of 20 seconds. So occasionally I will use it. Occasionally I'll use it um, at the start of a fight and back off, and then use these um, the, the debuff skills to set the mob up for some, some big damage. So I will sort of hamstring it, keep away, buffing from debuffing from range, and then let loose with all the fury and the raging blades. Uh, true heroic, heroics is quite nice when you're you're in um, a group where you're being affected by power, and you're you've got power drains everywhere, uh, and yeah, all the tank is losing aggro because they've run out of power and there's no law master to help them out or various reasons when somebody's losing power. You can just give a jolt of five to six hundred power, which most people it's sort of ten percent of their power bar. Um, and if you time it right to do it like that, like that, then you can use your second wind to get your own power back. Um, but you've given to other people because it costs 401 power to do. Or, alternatively, give yourself power that then you can share around the group. So that's quite useful. Um, I do have my boast. God, what an ugly face she's got when she's boasting. Oh well. Um, and my man heal as they say um, which is all fairly pathetic these days isn't it and and back to my fight on I have a dog weird um, poplar horns I still have nine of those left and I have 24, 24 doomfold horns. Um, on the face of it, they're exactly the same. Same uh, range targets, radius, cooldown, and stun duration. 10 second stun duration. Um, you can do a huge amount of damage in 10 seconds. You do have to watch when you're using it that you haven't already stunned with this earlier in the fight. And all the mobs are on stun immunity. It's more of a case if you start a fight and this is still on cooldown, and you've got oh, one or two more mobs than you think you can handle. It's better to do the stun than rely on healing during the fight. You can stun, you can do a tremendous amount of damage in 10 seconds. And lower levels, I guess it's going to be a less of a stun. Still very useful um, when you compare it with your default stun of only three seconds. If you imagine three seconds, turn around, go around the back of the mobs, let loose with fury and raging blades, they're pretty much done anyway. This actually lets you um, have a full 10 seconds and get these off cooldown or one of them. So you can do you know, a second Raging Blade as they're coming out of the stun. So very useful to have those. Uh, I do have further pots, but I tend not to use them, hence the full stack there. Um, maybe when further was a problem before, we could just spam Battle Frenzy to keep it up all the time. It was more useful, um, and you know, with the chances of getting a devastating moment achieved, um, 
during the 30 seconds. And would, it's, would the def crit be less than our crit, seeing as we have so many bonuses to crit damage? Um, but potentially that could get inside a rotation for a DPS boss fight sometime. Um, but currently it's not in any rotation of mine. But it's there ready to use if necessary. Likewise, the horns are there ready to use, and I do use them. Uh, Blood Rage breaks out of stuns and dazes. So, um, very useful. A minute cooldown and removes disarm effects. Um, so, potentially, in combination, these two, uh, if the disarm is a wound, this will get rid of it. Um, if it's another effect, or you've been stunned, this is very useful. So, a minute cooldown and a 50 second cooldown. Um, and this is a 50 second cooldown because of an ally's uh, legacy somewhere. But it's not there. Uh, ooh, where is it? Battle Frenzy. Battle Frenzy. Fear nothing, fear nothing. Ah, oh, yes, minus 30 seconds, fear nothing cooldown. So, if you think about the other classes having um, reasonably short duration removals, having the LI legacy makes it from a completely useless 45 seconds um, to a quite useful 15 seconds. However, it's not as good as some because it only removes one of each as opposed to two of each or all of them or four of any type, like a guardian traded. Um, so the legacy is very important to make it into a useful skill. Um, they're nothing cool there. Um, rend bleed damage. Rend isn't quite so good with this, that inflation recently in Mordor. Battle Frenzy is a must because you can have it up all the time. Air effect skill damage a must. Hold damage a must. Red down reduction a must. Critical damage, damage multiplier a must. So there is nothing there that isn't highly useful. Um, likewise, Blade Wall you're going to use a lot. So, and Blade Light A power cost is going to be useful. Bracing attack heal, debatable because it's not actually doing a lot. 3000 is a, well, it's, is it 5%? On a cooldown of 30 seconds and it uses up our fervor. Um, so, back to next one. Fury of base damage from fervor. So, the more firm fervor you've got, Fury of Blades does more damage. So, uh, so by default, it's tool city is 11,000. Max that out, you've got 22,000, 22,000, 19,000. So, highly useful. Um, Raging Blade, the swing swing, uh, it's a no brainer. Champion's Horn, Champion's Horn, stun duration, plus five. So, uh, it doesn't affect this, but it does affect this. So, plus five means it, this horn would be normally a five second stun. And I use this a lot, that's why I haven't got a full stack, I've only got 21, 9 of those. So I, I do like Champions on Stun Duration. And Exchange of Blows Melee Damage, very useful, adding 29.2% Melee Damage and the little bit that reflect us. Um, If I'm reflecting 35k back at a mob, it means I'm dead. 
uh, and I can they easily do a, well possibly a hundred thousand on just a couple of months. Uh, I think we've covered pretty much every skill. A oh, wild attack. Wild attack sadly remains a single target. It says it's a powerful melee attack, followed by a quick offhand swipe. It just doesn't do it for me unless I'm in red line, um, where I could possibly buff it up. But it's only adding. Well, in red line, it's probably useful, but it's still only adding 25% to a not very much damage on a single target. Increase hit of hit chance by 5% for 10 seconds. Oh, oh critical hit chances are. Well, oh, uh, actually, they're not great. Three percent for me, anyway. So I'm I tend not to use that, but what I should do is I should switch him that because that's that's a sort of permanent use it, use it, use it, use it, use it, use it. Use it. But it's going to take me um, a goodly while to get used to it, having moved position and not be a clicky and be um, a keyboard press. Uh, and most of my bars are there because of how I gain the skills um, or when I gain the skills. So, I you know, this was a in fact, probably it was Swift Blade was at first. Uh, yeah, Feral Strikes is the corruption removal. I, mean, I think it used to be Savage Strikes. It gets changed to Feral when you get in, into the, that part of the game where corruptions become a thing on mobs. And good old Clobber. Which doesn't have the, th the three second cooldown at all, but ten seconds, and it costs further. Um, what is important to remember though, because it does cost further, it's no good firing off a fury of blades and then trying to get a clobber off. If you want to do some damage and then interrupt something, you're better off doing a raging blade, which won't use a full bar of further. Um, and then you can use clobber. And I hope I don't need to explain. Let fly. It does get used occasionally. Um, I. These are all very important. <laughs> To a yellow line champ. So get as much of this as you can. Just ignore the finesse and the might because you can get those elsewhere and you can save yourself 10 points to spend over here or here or around here. But it will be interesting when I get at some point when we'll get a few more points we can finish off that and then I can think mm, do I want to? no I don't actually want to do any of these skills the trouble is with all these to make them powerful you have to go deep into the tree and get the bonuses on this side um, so in the yellow line they're practically useless what would be nice would be you have to have champions duel slow in your A line, but that's a long way off getting. It'd be nice to have a combo of killing spree and the equivalent of an A line. 
and that would actually make um, an awesome combination. Um, pretty soon it can't, well, if it can be done, you'll be missing out on so many other really useful things. Uh, yeah, this um, sprint cool down. I'm guessing that's where sprint comes in that shoulder. Really useful. Five minutes, two minutes off, maybe it's not quite so useful. Uh, that's it for me. I suppose I could. Uh, this is my wall speed. It's got my standard choice of um, legacies, but it it is originally it's for knocking stuff off their own mounts. We don't have any mounted enemies these days. But it's got the power and endurance um, as a priority. Um, but it's, it's also got its morale levels high, so yeah, it lasts a bit longer. And it's uh, also my favorite light rifle and speed, just because I like the skills. Um, I suppose my main choice for light was also the fact that I had the the um, dismount charts um, on two of the legacies, um, which made, meant early days of mounted combat very useful when you got war battles, you needed to dismount. Um, it was extremely useful. So potentially, uh, I kind of need a different mount um, targets that are always going to be on foot. Maybe add in bleeds, um, go for a medium horse. But I kind of used to the light because of the dash I'm putting on permanently. But I haven't skimped on it. It's maxed out legacies. Got the best bridle uh, um, relics I can. This window to remain this wide. I keep thinking it doesn't remember it closes up that gap so that you're forever going to the store accidentally. Anyway, that's 33 minutes of your life on Champions 